Hey everyone, I'm Hoki Hoshi, and today, let's talk drifting. First in this video, we'll discuss mods and basic driving technique. Then we'll get into the tuning, and finally, we're going to look at a real drift car so you can compare how its setup relates to setting up a car in Forza. Now in Forza drifting, there are two main schools of thought. There's the crowd that is just going for high scores, and they'll often drift with all-wheel drive, high horsepower, and aggressively tuned cars. And then there are the drivers that prefer a more realistic sim-like experience, often sticking with lower power, JDM cars, and realistic tunes and settings. Personally, I sit somewhere in the middle. I always drive rear-wheel drive, usually stick with older Japanese cars, but I do allow for higher horsepower and more aggressive tunes. This gives me a good balance of higher drift zone scores while still keeping some of the styling and purity of drifting culture, and for this video these are the concepts I'll be shooting for. Now let's start at the top with game settings. The only two must haves here are making sure that traction control and stability control are set to off. I would also recommend that you set your braking to ABS off. For a more simulation experience, you can set your steering to simulation, but I would recommend, especially if you're starting out, to keep things on normal. Also, if you're looking for a more sim experience, or if you want to use things like clutch kicking, you can switch to manual with clutch, but again, if you're just starting out, stick with manual. Now let's get into the drifting itself. I like to break a drift into four sections. The line, the entry, the drift, and the exit or transition. Finding the right line is really important for drifting because if you come at the corner wrong, you're going to either end up flying off the road or you won't be properly set up for the next corner. So this is something that's really difficult to teach because every car drifts differently, every one drifts differently, and every corner is different. The best thing that I can tell you here is that practice with your car is everything, and if you're still struggling, see if you can find some videos online either of real drifting or Forza drifting to find out how they tackle separate corners. Now the second part of the drift is the entry, and this is debatably the most important and most difficult to get right. Now there are a lot of different ways to enter a drift, the most common being a handbrake entry, weight transfer, power over, or clutch kicking if you have clutch turned on. And a good drifter will find a way to combine and utilize all of these strategies to find the best way to drift around a corner. It's generally agreed that the handbrake entry is the best place to start for beginners, and you can practice this by turning into a corner, keeping the handbrake held down until you hit a stop, and trying just not to spin out. Keep practicing this until you achieve a result similar to what you're seeing in the video right now. And once you've got that down, you can start to find out when to release the handbrake and start adding power. This brings us to our third section, the drift itself, and there are a few ways to control your car mid-drift. Using the brakes while you have a front brake bias can help to slow the car down while increasing angle. Using the handbrake can help to extend a drift. Playing with a throttle is really important for figuring out where your car is going to go in a corner, in fact, it's common that you'll steer more with your throttle than you will with the actual steering wheel. This brings us finally to the exit or transition. Now, if you're just exiting a drift, try to slowly bring the car back straight and then release the throttle. And if you're transitioning to the next corner, try to exit your first drift so that you're set up in the right part of the road to get into that next drift. Now that we've covered some basic tips and techniques, let's get into how to actually tune and set up your car for drifting. Starting with front tire pressure, this should be tuned to achieve maximum possible grip. If you want to know how to do this, go ahead and check out my Forza Horizon 4 basic tuning guide. Rear tire pressure should be set pretty low. This allows for a good amount of grip and also a smooth transition between grip and loss of grip. Gearing for drifting is extremely important and takes a lot of trial and error for every car. What you're looking for is to set up your gearing so that when you're in a drift, you're getting very close to the rev limiter, but you're almost never bouncing off of it. Typically what I'll do is drift on the stock gearing until I find a gear that's close to what I'm looking for. Then I fine tune that gear in the tuning window and bring the gear before and after it closer together. This does take a lot of trial and error, but I can't stress enough how crucial it is to a good drift setup. Now for alignment, things are a little bit easier. If you have the drift suspension upgrade, which you definitely should, these will be your stock settings. I would recommend keeping front camber at negative five, and I'd start with rear camber at zero. If you do find that you're having some trouble with the rear end spinning out, it sometimes can be helpful to add a very small amount of rear negative camber. Now for front toe, 
Higher toe out is much better for drifting because it gives you more effective steering angle, but it does make the car less drivable in a non-drifting scenario, so run this as high as you feel comfortable with. Rear toe is a great tuning tool to modify the feel of your car. More toe out will help extend your drifts and keep your back end out, but it is more prone to spinning out. Toe in helps keep your drifts a lot more controllable, but does shorten the total length of your drifting angle. I'll typically set this higher towards toe out if I'm doing a high score run, but more towards toe in if I'm doing tandem runs. Now your caster should be set at maximum on the drifting suspension, and I recommend keeping it here. It increases your effective camber, which is very important in a drifting setup. Now for anti-roll bars. The front anti-roll bar should be set as per the formula that I use in my Forza 4 Tuning Basics guide. I sometimes find, however, that this results in a front ARB that's a little bit too stiff, so don't be afraid to go soft with the front anti-roll bars. As for the rear, this should be set as low as possible for the best grip drifting, but if you find that you have too much grip, you can set this higher. Now springs should again be set to the same formula that I use in my basics guide, but keep in mind they're just a starting point. If you feel like you have some issues with front grip, soften the front suspension. Now, with drift setups, they're often as low as possible. This usually favors a stiffer spring setup. If you're hungry for a little more grip, you can raise the suspension a little bit and then back off the stiffness. Spring damping is another setting that's very important to how your car feels during a drift. Drift setups prefer a soft bump and a stiff rebound. This means that the suspension will absorb bumps softly without unsettling the car, but the stiff rebound will put the wheels back on the ground quicker. You can get some good numbers to start with by using that same formula from my basics video, but instead of using 60% for the bump stiffness, I would recommend 50% or lower, and don't be afraid to go higher with the rebound. Now your arrow is most likely going to be locked on most drift setups, but if it's not, I would recommend setting things more towards speed. However, if you want a little bit more front turn in, you can add more downforce in the front, and if you want a little bit more grip, you can add more downforce in the rear. Braking is another pretty simple one. You want your brake bias to be more towards the front because it gives you more options to control your car in the corner. Now, braking pressure should generally be set as high as you feel comfortable with. Assuming you have ABS off, a higher brake pressure will help with more aggressive transitions. Now for the differential. This one's pretty easy, but it's a must. Acceleration has to be at 100%. This high setting means that the wheels will lock up easily and consistently, which is key for drifting. Now the deceleration is a little bit more down to personal preference. A lower setting will help you regain control of the car after a drift, but too low can create some unwanted weight shift. A very high setting is more preferential for drifting because it keeps the wheels locked up even when you're not on the throttle. Now let's just talk quickly about the mods themselves. Drift suspension is definitely a must as it gives more steering angle than any other suspension in the game. A larger wheel diameter will help with consistency and grip, and your tire compound should be adjusted for how much power you make. The amount of power your car has is completely up to personal preference, but keep in mind that a torquey build is generally a little bit better, and lower power builds will prefer a less aggressive tuning setup. Now with all this information, you should have everything you need to be pulling some sick 360 entries in no time at all. But before you do that, let's take a look at a real drift car driven by my close friend and fellow YouTuber, Dab Sedan. Hey everyone, I'm here at Blizzneyland, aka Drifting Heaven, and I'm with the Dab Sedan today. <laughs> We're going to go over how a drifting setup in real life can translate to a drifting setup in Forza. So let's go check out your car, man. All right, so I apologize here. Uh, the original plan was to kind of go over and talk about everything live. Um, but the shop was really loud that day, and when I went back and looked at the footage, it was pretty hard to hear us. So instead, I'm going to do some voiceover and just go over what we were talking about in the video. So we started with camber, and what you're looking at here is a camber gauge. Now in Forza, your camber maxes out at negative 5 degrees, and this gauge here actually maxes out at negative 6, but the car had more than that. So luckily, kind of like zeroing out a scale, we were able to adjust the gauge so that when it showed 0, it meant negative 6. 
and you can see that bubble I was just pointing at was at negative one and a half. So when we add six back to that, we're looking at seven and a half degrees of negative camber for the front tires. Now he also has that same value in the rear for a better wheel fitment. It is less common to see higher rear camber values, but sometimes style is just more important. The next thing we looked at was toe, and you can measure this by comparing the distance between your wheels in the front and the distance between your wheels in the rear. Now you can see here the front was 74 and 3 quarters, the rear is 74 and a half. And this means that the front of the wheels are pointed out away from each other. This is why it's called toe out. Now the quarter inch difference that we had equates to about half a degree of toe out. This is enough to give the car a little more effective steering angle while also keeping the car drivable. After taking a look at those things, we went to look at caster as well as the anti-roll bars, which are also called sway bars. It was tough to show the caster well without taking off the wheel, but essentially a high caster value, which this car has, will show the bottom of the strut closer to the front of the vehicle. This creates better self-centering and gives you more effective camber. Next in the tuning window is the anti-roll bars, which are luckily right next to the suspension. You can see here there are four separate holes. The one closest to me where the end link is attached is the stiffest setting, and then as you go up, it gets softer. Dab Sedan's car is set up with stiff anti-roll bars in the front and rear. The stiff sway bars, paired with a very stiff suspension setting, compensate for the low ride height of the vehicle. But he did mention that it's common for people to run soft or no anti-roll bars in the rear, and that can help with grip. Now what you're looking at here are different ways to adjust the dampening settings on the coilover. Now Dab Sedan's coilovers were built and tuned specifically for this car, and that's because settings like the dampening can vary widely from car to car and do play a big role in how the car feels in a drift. The next setting you'll see in the tuning window is for aerodynamics, and although having some downforce, especially in the front, can be helpful, it's mostly for looks, and that's the case here on Dab Sedan's car as well. A lot of drifting is done at speeds and angles where aero just isn't really very effective. The next tuning setting you'll see is for braking, and here on Dab Sedan's car, you can see an adjustment in the engine bay that allows you to make more front or rear brake bias. This was set on his car for full front brake bias. This gives you more options for control in the middle of your drift. He also pointed out, and this is not something you can have in Forza, his rear dual caliper brake setup, and this allows for his hydraulic e-brake to not interfere with the normal rear braking of the car. This is somewhat uncommon because most hydraulic e-brakes run in line with the already existing rear brakes. Now the final tuning option, and last thing we're going to look at today, is the rear differential. Dab Sedan's car uses a two-way racing diff, which is equivalent to the max upgrade you can get in Forza. And just like in the game, this is tunable. Dab Sedan's setting was at 100% lock on acceleration, and 85% lock on deceleration. And that's really everything I wanted to show you guys. So I did manage to snag Dab Sedan for a little interview, and I'll play that in a minute here, but We've been showing this car without being able to listen to it for long enough, so let's get this thing starting up. Hey guys, I'm here in the editing room and I have Dab Sedan with me to talk a little bit more about drifting in Forza. What's up? So I've got to ask, how well do you think Forza drifting translates to drifting a real car? Uh, I feel Forza drifting in general is pretty accurate. The concept of what line to take as well as the general steering, throttle, and braking inputs, they all apply similar to how they do in real life. The biggest difficulty I feel in transferring over those techniques comes from the general lack of intensity and risk that's associated with real life drifting that simply can't be conveyed in a video game like Forza. Yeah, it is definitely a bit more scary committing to a drift in real life. So I think a lot of people would be interested to hear this. Do you think that drifting in Forza has helped you become a better drifter in the real world? Absolutely. The original Forza came out like a year before my first ever drift day. That digital seat time is a much cheaper alternative to driving in real life, and it can definitely help you hone in on your skills without risking your car or getting you in any legal trouble. Absolutely. So, if you had any advice for someone just getting into drifting in Forza, what would you suggest? 
Uh, I'd suggest that you find a front-engine rear-wheel drive car that you find cool and exciting, and make sure that that car is properly set up. Um, from there, I'd say that you should learn the basics, just like in real life, with simple things like donuts, figure eights, just find a big open spot so you can learn general car control, how to steer with the throttle, how the car flicks back. Um, that'll make it a lot less frustrating when you try to take it to a track or a more common drift spot. Uh, from there, I'd suggest watching other drift videos on YouTube to find the popular spots where people are drifting, see the lines they're taking, and uh, get in as much practice in different spots as you can. Awesome. All right. Well, let everyone know where they can see more of you and your car. I'm on Instagram. That's my most common platform, uh, Dab Sedan, as well as YouTube, uh, Dab Sedan as well. And on Forza, if you want to throw in some tandems, I'm Dab Sedan as well. Well, thank you so much for hanging out and showing us your car. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up the drifting video. I put a lot of love into this one, and I really hope that it helps you guys out. So moving forward with the channel, I'd love your guys' input on what you'd like to see next. I do have a drag video that I'm working on, but I did have an idea of starting a small series where I spotlight a specific car, showing off its strength and weaknesses, what it's best at, how it tunes, and how it stacks up to the rest of the cars in its class. The cars would be viewer voted, and although the videos would be shorter, I want to keep the channel on an educational focus while avoiding more spammy content. Definitely let me know in the comments what type of content you guys would like to see, even if it's not Forza related or has to do with my real car life. Now don't forget to go check out Dab Sedan and tell him I sent you. and I hope you guys really enjoyed drifting, I hope this video helped, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.